Good morning. Here are our announcements for Sunday, October 9th. Our tailgate cook-off and trunk or treat will be held Saturday, October 22nd. We will be sending more information about this event to you soon. October 15th will be our God's Work, Our Hands Work Day. The sign-up is at the welcome desk. We are looking for people who would like outdoor help with their fall chores and volunteers willing to help. We have a fellowship host sign up on the coffee bar. Please take a look where you can help. Also, please remember when bringing treats, we are a cinnamon free church. Next Tuesday is our pillars serve meal. We are in need of garlic bread, green beans and desserts and volunteers who can help serve from four to seven. Our youth will be selling pizzas. Help support their trip to Montana next year. There is an order form on the welcome desk or visit this week's newsletter for more delicious information. If you would like more information on what is going on at Christ the King, contact the office at 920-788-6492. Have a great week. So the past several years, we've had a workday in October, uh, kind of an outreach into the community to help people that might not be able to do some of the things that they formerly could do, raking leaves, cleaning gutters, washing windows, things like that. And next Saturday, the 15th, we are offering that again. Um, we've had a note in constant contact for the last three weeks, maybe, and we have not gotten an overwhelming response either for people needing help or people willing to help. So I just want to take one last swing at, at engaging people in this opportunity. Um, it can be a great thing for families. We have, uh, in the past, we've had families raking together and washing windows together, and those are kind of fun things to do uh, with smaller children even. The projects we do have available this year, uh, Nate got us involved in one at uh, Fox Valley Lutheran, what well, used to be Fox Valley Lutheran Homes, I think it's Lidwood Heights Apartments now. We've got a little painting job there in their parking garage. They need, it's probably a 60 foot wall paint. It'll be a nice easy job and we can do that. It's not weather dependent. Um, there are some landscapey sorts of things around the building here we can do. Uh, we have apparently muskrats in the pond up front and we have to fill in some spots there and there's some shrubbery things and some tree trimming so we can do those. The one that weighs most heavily on me personally, uh, Nate had gotten a cold call probably six weeks ago from a lady, uh, wheelchair bound, doesn't work, a uh, little bit of a hoarder in, in an apartment um, that is being converted to a non-smoking apartment, which is a problem for her because she's, despite her beliefs, is a heavy smoker, and the apartment reflects that. Um, I've had one person help with me f a couple of times where we went in and moved stuff from spot to spot, and that, I, I told the lady, was probably all we were going to be able to do. And that has been eating me up. I, I know that we can do more for her. Um, I don't think the call was random at all. I think that God was laying this before us as something that he needs us to do. And I, I would like that to be highest priority next Saturday. Uh, so I'm looking for people willing to bring light into a very dark spot. It's, it's uh, a tough spot to be. It needs cleaning. It'll be washing walls and carpets and things like that. But uh, to bring hope to somebody who has no hope, I think is what we're supposed to do as, as Christians. So the God's work, our hands theme of these work days would be, would be front and center of that. So anyway, point I'm laboring to make, if you can help or need help, um, this is a graphics part of the show. You can contact me at this email address or you can contact uh, the knower of all things, Tina, in our office, and she will direct you to um, how you might help. So thanks for considering this. Good morning. 
We give thanks for the ministry that King's Tools does around the congregation. And um, we have a wonderful invitation before us that, that Jim just extended for the 15th. Um, welcome to all of you who are guests this morning. To those of you who are joining us online, maybe for the first or second time, good morning to you. Um, it is, let's see, 18th or something? Yeah, 18th Sunday after Pentecost. We're, we're still in the green season. We're going to be in the green season for a while. A couple additional things um, I just want to highlight. It was mentioned in the announcements, Trunk or Treat is happening on the 22nd. We could still use some more trunk sponsors for that. That is a thing that we invite the community to, uh, and we invite kids from all over the community to come basically trick-or-treating in our parking lot. Um, insider tip tells me there's going to be a bounty castle. So it'll be extra fun, um, but what, where we could use some support and help from the congregation is uh, sponsoring trunks and handing out candy. Um, our altar flowers this week uh, are given by Hal Jorgensen um, in honor of his wife, Judy. It, it, it's been 10 years since her passing, and so we remember her uh, through the gift of this arrangement this morning. I think that's all that we have for announcement. Let's go ahead, take a deep breath, pause, and you can go ahead and stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend, amen. Now hear these words of forgiveness. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. May we say amen? Let's join together in singing our gathering song, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Let's join together in praying the prayer of the day as you see it on your screen. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite our young people to come forward for the children's sermon. <clears throat> Oscar, I have a job for you, actually. Brent, can you hook us up here? Here, I'm going to hold you this. Can you be our cameraman? Okay. Um, it's looking at the floor right now, so you hold it like that. And all of the online people are going to be seeing what you are seeing in that camera. So come on over, friends. And you can sit down there if you need to. You can sit right next to Billy, and you can show our online folks what's up here. Okay. Good morning. How are you? It's good to see you. Hi, Natalie. Oscar, thanks for doing the hard work today. <laughs> okay, I have drawn a map. It might be a little bit poorly drawn. But this is a map of what Jesus' world looked like in the area that he lived. So this is the Sea of Galilee. That's a place where um, we heard stories of uh, Jesus being on a boat and teaching from there. We, heard, heard, we hear stories a lot about uh, people crossing uh, the, the lake, and there was a storm, so Jesus was there for that. So this is a region called the Galilee, and down here is a region called Samaria. Can you say that, Natalie? Can you say Samaria? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so right Generally, people who lived up here didn't really like the people who lived down here in the red. And where our story takes place today is right here in between the two places. And so we're going to do a little, a little thing. Um, Hannah, can you help me out with this part? I need you, and you can kind of show our online folks the, this, our map. You got it? Okay, so Hannah, I'm going to ask you to put a little bit of water up here in Galilee. Just do like a little spoonful of that. Okay, and maybe a little bit down here. I'm going to hold this up. You can do a little, little more to the south. Okay, there. Look at, see how the colors ran a little bit? And then, can Billy help me out too? Okay, so, Billy, I'm going to have you put a little drop of water on the red. There we go, way to go. And look at what is happening here. Take a look at this. So we have our map. The colors are kind of moving around and meshing and blending. And pretty quick, if I keep holding it up this way, there's going to be a blur that happens between the color of um, Galilee and the color of Samaria. And that is where our story takes place today, is right in this mixed area where something really beautiful is about to happen. Jesus is going to heal some people who are, are very sick, and they are going to give thanks. So we give thanks for the way that Jesus works in the mixed areas and in uh, the areas where the red and the blue meet. So with that, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Put one hand in the air. Thanks, Oscar, for all your hard work. And the other in the air. That's okay. <laughs> Clap them together and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the ways that you show up in the in-between places. Thank you for all of your healing. In your name we pray and play. 
Let's grow it out. Here we go. Amen. All right. You can go back to your seats, and I invite our reader to come forward for the children's sermon. Thanks, dude. Good morning. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. Today's reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. When I was a kid, we used to take really long and epic trips to Montana. Usually, we would go all the way to Glacier National Park, which is located in like the northwestern part of the state. Um, and if, if you've done that drive before, you know that it's ridiculously long. If you have done that drive when you were a kid, you know it is like unimaginably long. <laughs> Things just take longer, right, when, when you're a kid. And it didn't occur to me until I was an adult um, that those trips for our family took like three to four weeks at a time uh, because we would camp along the way. My mom and my stepdad were both teachers, and so uh, during their sabbatical time, they would take this uh, long trip with us. Uh, I know now that traveling with kids is not really a vacation, uh, so bless them for taking a trip so that we can see uh, the beautiful parts of our country. Standing here as an adult, I could tell you a good number of stories from each of those trips. I could tell you five different stories um, from places like the world's largest buffalo in Jamestown, North Dakota. And I could tell you like four different stories of how we went horseback riding in Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Um, that's where I like found the love of my life, a horse named Reno, who's no longer with us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I could also tell you like six stories of all the times uh, and occurrences that my stepdad told us that when we got to Custer State Park in South Dakota, we would see so many buffalo. And every time we got there, we saw no buffalo. <laughs> Going on these trips with my family, it, they were like a huge part of formation and my growth. It was on these trips, uh, since we would camp, I would learn life skills that would serve me well later in life. So like, it, um, I learned how to build fires and to how to do it safely in really dry conditions. I also learned how to build fires in really wet and rainy conditions. I learned how to pack and efficiently roll my own sleeping bag, which I didn't realize was a life skill until I was a camp director. I also learned how to read and navigate trail maps uh, and how to get oriented with place and space while in the woods. What's interesting about all these trips that we took as a kid is that even though our destination was generally Glacier National Park in Northwest Montana, I only have one or two memories of actually being there. All of my memories 
have come from the in-between, the space and time in between Wisconsin and Montana. All of that time and space were uh, places of in-between and places of growth where I learned um, how to be a kid, how to be bored. <laughs> I, that, that, that's a life skill I learned on those trips. And how to uh, be in small community in different places even when that community is my family. That space between Wisconsin and North Western Montana was liminal space, or in-between space. Our first line of our text this morning tells us, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. What's interesting about this, I'm going to have Emily go back to that map. What's interesting about this, and I... It, I have to admit, it's been a long time since I've looked at a map of first century Israel. Um, that area, that yellow area that you see on the top of that map, that's the region called the Galilee. Jesus was doing ministry in that place. And then uh, that pink region you see in the south, that's where Jerusalem is. So what, uh, that, that region is Judea. That region that's in between there is Samaria. We talk all the time about Samaritans and how they were othered and uh, how they were not, uh, Samaria was filled with non-Jewish people. But what we, I think we forget is that in order for um, Jewish folks to go from the Galilee to Jerusalem, which is what Jesus was doing at this point. He was going to Jerusalem, which would then lead to the cross. He had to go through Samaria. But what's interesting about that first line of our text today is that you'll notice there is no region between Galilee and Samaria. There is no region there. Instead, what we have is a border. So for Luke, our presumed writer of this gospel, it's an odd location to start telling about an encounter with Jesus. And when we look at the map today, we can piece together that this story of healing and transformation and growth happened in borderlands. Now, what do borders do? Borders are political markers that generally aim to keep either people out or to keep people in. Uh, borders mark the start of one set of laws and the end of another set of, of laws. They're places that are generally monitored in modern day. And they are, for our purposes today, liminal spaces. There are spaces of in-between. There are spaces where things are a little uncomfortable because you don't know where you are at any point in time. I remember as a kid when we would drive on these trips, we would cross from one state to the next. We'd drive over a border, and my sister and I would try to be the first ones uh, to speak that we were in the next state. Um, and in my head, like, as we went over a border, which realistically is wider than just one line, um, we, I imagine our car like, oh, we're half, half of our family is in one state, half is in the other, right? Like, there are places where there's no real declaration of, of, of who, be, um, who that space belongs to. So, this particular border, the border of Samaria and the Galilee, that is the liminal space where our story happens. There was a liminal space between, um, the space between Jewish folks to the north, non-Jewish folks to the south. There was space between the, the region of Galilee and the, re the region of Samaria. There was the region um, in the, ten the bodies of the ten lepers, lepers that were considered clean ritually clean, but yet they were not clean enough to be hanging out directly in one of their countries or regions. Notice they were hanging out on the borderlands. 
And yet, and yet, it is in this liminal space that Jesus' healing and transform, transformative action takes place. God shows up in the in-between space. Jesus heals not just one person, but ten people in that in-between. And then he tells them to go off and to show themselves to the priest. They all do that, except for one. That one person who is from Samaria, who is a non-Jewish person, so you wouldn't expect him to turn around and thank this Jewish Jesus, but it happens. It's that one Samaritan, the one we would least expect, who turns around to give thanks and recognizes that this healing and transformation has just from, come from a God who is bigger than himself. The Samaritan in that moment was dwelling in a liminal space. The Samaritan was also embodying liminal space, in between space, because they were considered ritually clean, but also a Samaritan. And this was a person who had just walked through liminal space that is between thinking and not knowing Jesus into the space and the life and the wholeness and the growth that comes along with being in relationship with God. Holiness, transformation, growth, all have a way of showing up in the unexpected liminal spaces of life. Liminal spaces in our lives have a way of popping up. On a communal level here at Christ the King, you all are entering into a liminal space. In that time, you will discern and work to consider, uh, alongside Pastor Nate, who will be a good fit for an associate pastor to come next. For me, I'm entering into a liminal space of transitioning to serving not just one congregation, but many congregations in the area. I think two of the liminal spaces that show up in our lives even more as individuals. I have multiple friends who um, are my age and have been diagnosed with breast cancer. I have learned that there is a liminal space between test results and diagnosis and actually getting a treatment plan. It is a scary and lonely liminal space that everyone has to pass through. Throughout time, as a pastor, and even before that, I've watched and observed the liminal spaces that families pass through when they lose a loved one. There's the shock and the immediate loss, and then there's this liminal space that they have to work through as they wait to get to the funeral. Everybody has to go through that time where they can uh, put uh, their loved one to rest. And what happens in between there is a lonely, scary, and sad place. A lot of family stuff comes up in that time sometimes. I think of the time where our high school students enter into high school all hopeful. But what's happening in those four years of their lives and um, before they enter into the workforce or into school, that is a time of formation. That is a liminal in-between space. I think of another one, liminal space of, of life when uh, people go and transition from being a single person to being married. Sometimes transitioning from being a married person to a single person again is another liminal space that everybody face, that people face in their lives. Transitions in between times can be really, really scary and really uncertain. But of the many promises that we hear in our text today, one of the promises is that Jesus shows up 
with healing and transformation in the midst of all of that in-between space. It's during the times of our lives when we are neither here nor there, not at the beginning nor at the end, not a fixed person or community, but always becoming someone new, that Jesus shows up. It's in the uncertainty and in the messiness of transition that Jesus has a way of making his presence known and of bringing about holy change and holy transformation. How we start in a transition might not look the same or sound anything like how we ended up. And that is the power and that is the promise. That is a promise that we hear from Jesus. Even when the destination is northwestern Montana, there's a whole lot of growth waiting for us in the journey of moving along together. So my dear siblings in Christ, as we all enter into transitions, may you be on the lookout for God to show up in the holy places of your life. May you find growth in the vast newness that liminal space has to offer. May you find hope in the in-between that life brings. And may you stop to give thanks, just like that Samaritan did. Give thanks to the God who is the root of all transformation and who is working in you to become, to bring about someone new. Thanks be to God. Let's go ahead and stand as we sing our sermon song, O Christ Our Healer. Let's join together in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let's take a few moments to share the peace with one another this morning. We'll go ahead and collect the gifts of the morning.
Thank you very much for our musicians today. That was, that was great. Honestly, I have to say, I think that was maybe the first time I've ever heard saxophone played well in person. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> Would you all please stand? Let us pray together our offering prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. This morning, as we sing our prayer song, we'll sing through it once. I'll lift up some prayers, and I'll also leave some space for you all to lift up prayers of your own before we uh, sing through our prayer song one last time. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons. Here at Christ the King, we are blessed with the presence of many who are part of this community, including Bishop Ann Edison Albright. Pastor Nate Gowerke, Pastor Judy Deckert, and Pastor Brian Schmidt. We give you thanks for their ministry and their vigor in spreading the, your word to all who need to hear it. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. As your Holy Spirit moves the church universal in new directions, give leaders the energy and the courage to faithfully lead where you send them and their congregations. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. As we see your creation struggle in the midst of climate change, be with all places and creatures as they adjust to the devastation of their habitats due to storms, flooding, drought, and heat. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, who feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. During this week where we heard a story of Jesus bringing healing while in the in-between spaces, we think of all immigrants who are affected by policies made in borderlands of all countries. Walk with them to find hope, safety, comfort, and healing from the fearful situations they are leaving. Help us all remember 
that we are all immigrants who are standing at the borderlands of the kingdom of God. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick, especially our faithful friends. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Lord, we lift these prayers to you along with the prayers that are lifted up by those who are gathered in person or online as they lift them out loud in the silence of their hearts or in the comment section. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, may we say amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Kept it together until now. Because this is the greatest privilege of being a pastor right here is getting to preside over this meal with you. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He blessed it. He gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Are there tissues somewhere? So I gotta just clean myself up a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Communion here at Christ the King is uh, served by intinction. If you um, are someone who's not able to come forward, please do let an usher know so that, um, that we can bring communion to you. Ushers will start at the front and they will move backwards and you can come forward to, um, down the aisles and then out, back up through the outside. There's hand sanitizers, hand sanitizer at the front if you want to give that a little bit of a squeeze. And if you would like an individual serving of communion, those are available at the front for you as well. 
If you are someone who is in need of a gluten-free wafer, please do let your server know. So come, because this feast is ready for you. We know that we dine with the saints who have gone before us and the saints who will come after, because this is Christ's table, not ours. I think I also heard we need two more additional communion assistants. So with that, I invite our servers to come forward. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. May we say amen? amen. I'm getting used to this new flow. 
Okay, so we do the benediction now. A reminder that um, all the kiddos go back during our closing song to meet me in the back so we can send you all out. And those who are on Sunday school are going to go with Miss Susie straight into Sunday school. So with that, go ahead, join hands. God who gives life to all things, oops, sorry, and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. May the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. May we say amen? Let's join together in singing, we are marching in the light of God. Ready? Okay. Say it really loud. Go, Go in peace. peace. Bring God's love to life. life. Thanks be to God. God. Okay, you're going this.